So, I'm gonna put this under wild world news because this is some bullshit. Try to keep my composure while reading this. So Bleacher Report has a article entitled, John Cena deserves to break Ric Flair's world title record. Let me continue. It says, whether you like it or not, John Cena is on pace to break Ric Flair's record for the most world titles before he retires. One of the reasons why he's on uh, that pace is because the WWE hands around the titles like they're fucking Skittles. Like they don't mean shit. This definitely is going to cause issues among the legions of wrestling fans. You goddamn right. Because Flair's arguably the greatest of all time. Cena cannot fucking touch him. He can't touch him on the mic. He can't touch him in the ring. He can't touch him with charisma. Period. Some will set it as a, uh, see it as a good thing that someone new has taken up the mantle of the most successful world champion in wrestling history. Fuck out of here. While others will simply believe the wrong person has been chosen to succeed Flair. You goddamn right. Succeed? I'd use a different fucking example. Considering the fact that Flair has wrestled for a number of different promotions, the exact number of world titles he has held is up for debate. But 16 is the most accepted number among fans. The big difference between Cena and Flair, other than the length of their careers, is that Cena has amassed all of his reigns under the WWE banner, while Flair won titles ranking for WWE, WCW, and NWA. When you look at this issue from every angle, it becomes clear that Cena deserves to break Flair's record. No, the fuck he doesn't. Let's examine some reasons why Cena is worthy of this accolade. Let's, now I'm going to re-edit uh, that. Let's examine some bullshit why we at Bleacher Report think Cena is worthy of this accolade. They're getting kickbacks from WWE for saying this shit. John Cena is one of the hardest working superstars both inside and outside of the ring, as well as there are a bunch of other wrestlers throughout the fucking years. They just promote him like that. This is a guy who lives and breathes WWE, as do other wrestlers, which is something you can't say about everyone on the roster. That's correct. You can't say it about everyone on the roster, but you can say it about a few others on the roster. Sure, everyone who wrestles for WWE works hard because it's hard work, but Cena is of a different breed. I don't believe that. He goes the extra mile to make sure everyone knows why he is the company's top dog. No, he probably signed some papers and kissed some ass to have that be promoted in the propaganda that the WWE feeds us and that nobody fucking believes. And that's the reason why he gets booed all the fucking time. Not only does he wrestle at just about every pay-per-view and Raw taping, okay, so, uh, but he often wrestles twice due to most shows having dark match main events. I don't give a fuck. He is on the road all the time, working house shows right alongside everyone else. He So, so other wrestling champions have too. He could have taken a reduced schedule a long time ago due to the leverage he's built up, but he hasn't done that and probably never will. We all wish he would take a fucking break. Let's see what the rest of it has to say. He might not be The Rock. You goddamn right he's not The Rock. The Rock is in a different vicinity. Okay? Hey, The Rock is up here. Cena's down here looking up. Like, I wish I were you. When I go up, I want to be just like you, Mr. Johnson. That's Cena, Okay? He might not be The Rock, but there is no denying that Cena could have left for Hollywood a long time ago. Bullshit. Because if he could have, he would have. <laughs> Who wrote this shit? Uh, and made a good living starring in action movies and television shows. If he had the charisma that The Rock had, he could have did it. But he doesn't. Get the fuck out. <laughs> this is a... This 
He will occasionally make a film, but he always comes back to the ring. <laughs> the Rock has been the only guy that has been able to successfully make that switch. He's been the only one. Because he's been the only one really that capable, okay? There's been others that were close, but he's been the only one. And Cena's not even close to him. You should have heard the crowd when I went to WrestleMania 28. Oh my God. It was the, the air was bitter. You could taste the vinegar in the air. We hated him so much. I hate that fucking character. It's not just his wrestling, but it's also the other work he puts in for the company. We don't give a fuck. Media appearances. So The Miz does a ton of shit too. And so do the other uh, charity work. And corporate corporate announcements make his schedule uh, that much more hectic. And he does it all with a smile. And from what I found out a little while ago, a lot of the other superstars always grant. Um, uh, I don't want to say a lot of the others. Some of the other superstars always grant make a wishes too. But they don't grow uh, bring any attention to that because he's the company boy. Understand? Um. You might not like him as a fan. I hate him as a fan. But you have to res I don't got to respect shit. Uh, the way he conducts him. No, I don't. And how much effort he put. I don't have to do shit. Being the best he can be. Put aside the Cena. Triple H is better than he ever was. And I'm not bringing Triple H down to say that. It just showed a picture of Triple H on the screen, and I was like, it just brought to mind. Triple H is better than Cena ever was. On the mic, in the ring, charisma, all that. He's just the company boy. He's loyal. It never leaves. You know, that type of shit. Let me get through this. Put aside the Cena sucks chance. And how cool it is to boo him. No, it's not cool. It's organic to boo him. We legitimately hate the character. Do you understand that? And really think about how good Cena is. No, he's not good. He has someone link this to Bruce Blitz so he can watch this. Because I'm sure he's going to agree with everything I've said and probably have a whole lot more to say. He has stolen the show countless times against many different opponents. No, he hasn't. Why? After a while, it becomes obvious that it's not his opponents that make those matches special on their own. Cena is definitely the kind of guy who sticks to his signature arsenal. No, he doesn't. But what, uh, uh, what big star doesn't? Because uh, he's changed what actually made him successful, and that was the more edgy thugonomics which, if he brought back, will be corny now anyway. So I don't know what the fuck he's going to do to revive his career. Because at this point, you'll never... That character will never get my fucking respect. Ever. I don't know who the man is in real life. The only good thing I can say for him is that he got a good-looking chick, and he's big. That's it. And I know he's got special supplements for that. So, you know. Uh, Cena is definitely the type of guy who says his arsenal. Yeah, but who doesn't? The Rock, Austin Michaels, and Ric Flair are all guilty of using the same moves over and over. That's true. It's just the fashion in which it's something about him that's just redundant and fucking boring. I will agree with that. That's the only thing that I have agreed with so far. Is that, yes, they all use the same moves over and over again. Of course. The thing that makes him just as special as those other legends is that he knows when to use what's familiar and when to take a risk. Bullshit. He doesn't have to add new things to his offense. But then you see him pull off a hurricanrana. It might not be the smoothest yet. you damn right that you've ever seen, but it's impressive when someone in his stature can even pull it off. Most powerhouses stick to power moves. Which is understandable, but Cena is constantly evolving and tweaking his strategy to match the opponent that he is in the ring with. When he faces Daniel Bryan, he uses more technical maneuvers. When he faces Randy Orton, he focuses on flashy stuff. When he goes up against someone like Big Show, he does power moves. Go watch one of his... I'm not watching his match. A 2005 
from this year. You can see someone who has changed quite a bit. Not uh, He is not only one of the most consistent talents, but he is someone who continues to improve. Yeah, he's consistently fucking horrible. If you are old enough to remember Cena, remember, Cena was blowing off the roof every arena he entered back in 2006. Right, that was back then when he was hot. It was absolutely deafening when he came out. Then it became cool to boo him. No, it didn't become cool. He started to suck. He was no longer thugonomics. He was no longer funny anymore. He was some type of overgrown, bitch-ass boy scout. It was fucking corny. Then it became cool to boo him. His character got a little stale. A little, okay? He got a whole lot of fucking stale. Like like preschool fucking cookies. That's how stale they got. You know, come to pick up your kid and they're sitting on the fucking floor. The manila fucking crackers and cookies. That's how stale he fucking is right now. Got roaches crawling on him. You know who got, you know who else got stale over the years? Ric Flair. Yeah, and then Flair came back. Um, once he reached a certain level of success, every one of his matches and pre- um, promos looked and sounded the same. Let me tell you something about Flair. He's so good on the mic. For me, he never really got stale. You know who else got stale? Hogan. And guess what he did? He reinvented himself. Totally reinvented himself. Guess who else might have got a little stale? Undertaker. Guess what? He reinvented himself, okay? The Rock was constantly reinventing himself, okay? Stone Cold might have got a little stale. Guess what? 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 Yeah, he reinvented himself, okay? <sighs> People have shorter attention spans these days, so they don't want to see someone do the same thing for several years in a row. The thing about Cena that makes him special is that whether he, wait, 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 wait. oh yeah, okay, he's saying the same thing. He gets a reaction now. Now get the fuck. No, it's bad. It's bad. The reactions that he gets. It is bad for business. Bad for business. There are plenty of wrestlers who get little to no response from the crowd, and I'd rather be them. Uh, Even getting booed is better than a complete silence. Everyone is welcome to have their opinion, and Cena embraces his haters just as much as his supporters because he knows that getting you react to him is the important thing, not how you react to him. Flair was never going to hold the record for the most world title reigns forever. Yeah, because now, like I said... They're passing them around, the titles around like fucking Skittles. Like, here, you want some too? Yeah, you can have some. And then you give it to back to, I want the song tomorrow, okay? And then next week, you give it back to me, and I'll give it to you next week. Like little fucking kids. Trading video games. Flair's never going to hold uh, forever, and unless Christina suffers a career injury within the next year, he will likely be the person to break it. This is a different kind of accolade than being in the Hall of Fame or winning the Royal Rumble. There can only be one person at a time to hold this distinction, and Cena deserves... Uh, get the fuck out of here. Uh, let's see here. He works his butt off every day to be the best, puts on great matches, bullshit, year after year, and gets some of the loudest responses from fans, both positive and negative. No, negative. Before the Cena haters rip this article to shreds, which Tyrone Magnus is currently doing, try to remember these three simple facts. John Cena is not the only person who deserves to break the record, but he is the closest to doing so. He doesn't deserve it, and there are others that probably deserve it. If it was anyone, if anyone would deserve it, as far as I'm concerned, it'd be someone like Taker, be someone like... um, Hulk Hogan, to be someone like uh, The Rock, someone like Austin, guys like this that are just, you know, consistently just the, the greatest, okay? Um, Ric Flair, and the two, Ric Flair supports breaking his record according to Q&A from the Arnold Classic. I don't give a fuck what Flair's senile ass thinks, okay? Sometimes being the greatest, you don't know the best, you don't know what's best for you. All right, Flair? I'm telling you right now, Flair. Yeah. 
as one of your greatest fans of all time, that you need to stay on top, on the top of Space Mountain, undefeated as the title holder for the greatest amount of title runs of all time. Yeah. Woo! Now, let me see what else here. It says WWE is filled with hard workers, but nobody works harder than John Cena. Get the fuck out of here. Ziggler works hard than his monkey ass. Daniel Bryan works harder than his monkey ass. Um, it might take a year, it might take two, but it's inevitable that Cena will break Flair's record. Uh, no, nah, get the fuck out of here. He deserves to do it. What do you think? Should anyone be allowed to break Flair's record of 16 world titles? If not, John Cena, who do you think deserves to do it? Let me tell you something. Just like right now, no one deserves to break Taker's WrestleMania streak. No one deserves to break Flair's. There is no one worthy at this time. And the only ones that were worthy are out. They are gone right now. Okay? Or they're part-timers. Okay? There's no one right now that's worthy. This article can kiss my black fucking ass. You see that? See that? See that Bleacher Report? Kiss this. Right there. Okay? It's nice and hard from doing squats. Motherfuckers. So anyway, now I'm done ranting about this. You can all post all your love and comments below. If you hate John Cena, hit the like button. If you like John Cena, hit the like button. One million subscribers. Woo!